Hi, I'm Ann Delisi. And I'm Chef James Regalo. And in episode 19 of Essential Cooking, we talk with food writer Mark Hurlianchek about this year's Detroit Free Press Food Fighters honorees, published instead of their annual Restaurant of the Year Award. The 2021 Free Press Food Fighters were selected to honor the most impactful chefs and restaurateurs in Metro Detroit. The story also happened to be Mark Hurlianchek's last as the food writer for the Free Press after five years at the paper. Hi, Mark. Hi, Ann. So how do we introduce you now? Uh, geez, how do you want to introduce me? What am I here well, for again? <laughs> oh, we know that you're our good friend, but now <laughs> we don't know that all the, after the comma, after your name, what we're supposed to say. So your, your tenure at the Free Press is now over. That's right. Yeah. Monday was my official last day. Yep. I do have my, uh, I've got my uh, going going away Zoom call, Zoom meeting uh, at four o'clock this afternoon. It's though, been so. five years, right? It has been a little over five years. Yeah, I'm kind of curious yeah. as to how much eating you've done during that time. Oh, God. Well, you know, just in the in the last year, I've dropped thirty pounds that I picked up, you know, in the previous four years before yeah. that. So, mm-hmm. um, I mean, I would have to, geez, the like in a number of meals. I think I was averaging about two hundred meals a year, um, like. For work, you know, mm-hmm. and then on top of like yeah. all the other all, right. all the other meals that I would eat, so you know, it's a lot yeah. of food. You know, you do the math; it's a thousand or so. Well, you did good. It's more than thirty pounds worth, and so you're looking pretty good over there. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you Thanks. for joining yeah. us, Mark. So, um, what has happened with everybody, especially in the food industry, everything had to be um, thought of differently and through a different lens. And you would, you and I would typically now be talking about the restaurant of the year and uh, the top 10 restaurants, new restaurants That's right. in Metro Detroit. And you decided to um, change that up completely and do something pretty wonderful to acknowledge some of the great work that were done by chefs in Metro Detroit during the pandemic. Yeah. Thanks for the kind words about the project. Um, I mean, it just didn't feel right to pick winners and losers just because mm-hmm. even, even the winners this year didn't feel like they were winning anything. You know what I mean? It just, yeah. a, a ranked kind of order of new restaurants just felt gauche and just didn't didn't, didn't match the tone of the year on top of the fact that I just wasn't doing my job the way that I had done it the previous four years, right. you know, before I was eating out all the time, you know, multiple times a week and trying to find these places. Um, and last year it just, it kind of, you know, the second the pandemic hit, I said, well, I'm taking my critics hat off and just going to be a, you know, a straight news reporter and just mm-hmm. kind of chronicle um, what's going on. And so, you know, the nature of the job changed. So I, I, I really couldn't have even done the job right. um, or done that project that way. What surprised you the most? Um, as you looked at the restaurant industry, um, the whole landscape of it last year. I mean, I know there's some obvious things, but what surprised you the most? Boy, let me think about this. I mean, I think the the biggest surprise is just the amount of resilience that, that you know, I mean, I, I guess that's, that's the big lesson from the year of just what people have shown, but like restaurant owners in particular, it was like, an impossible situation. And when I say impossible, I feel like I literally mean impossible. I, I, I looked at it as an observer and thought, there's no way that you can do this and, and, and maintain in this environment. And, you know, nevertheless, there's mm-hmm. still plenty of places that, 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 you know, shifted, persisted, mm-hmm. gave back through it all, you know, and, and were able to uplift their communities. I mean, it just really showed um, you know, to anyone that that ever thought that food was just something that we, you know, escaped escaped our politics or escaped our you know our problems from. I mean, it, this year just showed how important uh, chefs are, how important restaurants are, how important they are to our communities. Um, you know, if 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 you didn't see that before, I think this year proved it. Mm-hmm, so, absolutely. Yeah, I don't know if it was the most surprising thing, but it was it was certainly the most reaffirming thing. You know, it, we yeah. should mention three thousand restaurants have shuttered. An estimated, yes. Estimated. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that um, some, you know, thankfully were able to um, turn things around. And hopefully this latest round of stimulus money is going to prevent more from closing. I mean, that's the hope. Yeah, and there's a there's a carve out in the stimulus for restaurants. It's the Restaurants Act, which I wrote about in the, in the summer, mm-hmm. um, which does really target small independent restaurants, which, I th- you know, it's, it's too bad that it's a year later. It would yeah. have been great if this had been passed a year ago, because I mm-hmm. think, you know, of those 3,000, how many of them could still be around today? Um, but, you know, better late than never, I guess. Absolutely. So, Mark, talk about, uh, and all of these pieces, you know, that we're going to talk about um, are are these food fighters that, as you named them, so so lovely. I think that's a great way to name them. Um, you did articles about them that are all on Freep.com if people want to read them and, and check these out. But let's talk about some of these folks and how you determined 
um, how they got on this list of being a food fighter yeah. um, during this last year. Well, one of the one of the things about um, even the even the best new restaurants list in the, the the restaurant of the year previously is you know one of the the kind of things that we always thought about when putting that list together is that there has to you know these places are somehow either moving the needle or or in the news like they're they're pushing the conversation forward throughout the year, and so you know I think that. A lot of these folks, you probably, if you followed the news and you followed the, you know, the food beat, you you have heard of, of mm-hmm. many of them before and probably heard of these efforts previously. Um, but then to kind of reframe it and say, well, look, this isn't just a, you know, a flash in the pan, one thing effort here. Here's this, you know, collective effort. And, and OK, somebody may have done this, but somebody was also doing this at the same time, you know, just just to kind of frame it in a way that that showed that it wasn't, you know, it wasn't just one person doing something. This really was a community effort. And even these 12 folks that we chose to highlight, you know, they're just a small cross cross sample of the type of great work that the, that there has been in the community. But they are all chefs or restaurateurs. So that was the criteria, chefs or restaurateurs that really gave back to their community. You know, one that really got me was a chef, Omar Anani from Saffron de Trois. It was literally the same month that he got named by the James Beard Foundation, right? He got a. He was a semifinalist, was a semifinalist for best new restaurant, which yeah. he was shocked by. Sure, and, yeah. And literally in the next breath, yeah, um, the pandemic hit, and that was really an an interesting one because he was already, he was like, he was so elated because yeah. he was so surprised by this honor, and then he really shifted to a whole nother platform. Yeah. I mean, he completely turned it into the Saffron Community Kitchen. I mean, he shut down while other while other folks were kind of reopening their carryout. He he shut it down and said, well, we're just going to focus on, I can't do both. I can't do both safely for sure. So mm-hmm. let's just focus on feeding the community. And, and, you know, he did it, I think, in partnership with Brilliant Detroit. And there's mm-hmm. some other organizations that have supported the work. But um, yeah, you know, just, just the fact that he kind of shifted and said, let's do this. This is more important than me, you know, glowing and in, in, basking in my uh, afterglow of, of James Beard award season. And, you know, um, so yeah, that was, that's an honorable move. Absolutely a challenge. You know, one thing too, that obviously the free press isn't going to really talk about in a food fighters, you know, piece is that the free press had a huge part in helping restaurants out too. Mm -hmm. You know, they really, with the whole feed the frontline movement. I mean, I can, I can tell you just working with Amy at the free press. Shout out to Amy Rosner. For Mm -hmm. real. And, and, and Mark as well. I mean, you know, you know, because I mean, Amy and I, have been, we've been friends for a long time. We talk about things and, you know, kind of, I think, I feel like she pitched that idea to me. What do you think? And I was like, Are you, I mean, yeah, go for it. And then, I mean, next thing you know, she's just like, I mean, Amy single-handedly is visiting restaurants. Talk, she, Her spreadsheets alone, I mean, you're watching restaurants get influx of cash from the generous public and then feed in the front. It just was like, that 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 model should be should have been like the, the, the national model for mm-hmm. like food subsidies. It was it was incredible. So I know the free press isn't going to write about themselves as a food fighter, but for real, that was that was really impressive. Yeah, and I'll I'll credit to Amy Rosner. I mean, in the last year, um, due to her efforts and her team's efforts, and and you know the general public and some great donations, we were able to raise you know close to four hundred thousand oh, dollars that went directly yep. to yeah, direct. you know like thirty some restaurants around the city that then turn around and f- use that money to feed hospital workers, um, yeah. you know, homeless folks, just, you know, people who really need it the most. And then this program, this Food Fighters now is continuing that. So we are currently raising money for the next round of this program. Um, so it still goes on. Freep.com slash rescue. You can donate right now mm-hmm. and, and this money will go to folks like Omar right. um, and, and the other Food Fighters so that they can do this work. Black perspectives haven't always been centered in the telling of America's story. Now, we're taking center stage. Introducing NPR's Black Stories, Black Truths, a collection of Black-led stories from NPR's podcasts. Search NPR Black Stories, Black Truths wherever you get your podcasts. All right, let's talk a little bit about more of these food fighters yeah. that you that you named. Um, the list is incredible. It's like I can pick any one of these. Oh, Phil Jones and the hundred thousand uh, pounds of chicken thighs. Well, Phil Jones is the is the chef of the year, the <laughs> the, the man of the year. I mean, he's really the food fighter emeritus. You know, what I mean, he's been doing this work for a long time. Yeah, that's no yeah. surprise. I mean, yeah. Phil, Phil was yeah. doing this, you know, ten years ago. I mean, Phil Phil's the man. 
Talk about him a little bit, Mark. Yeah, I mean, Phil is just an amazing guy. He, he literally, he texted me at one point in the, in the summer. I was just checking in, you know, because Phil, this is the work that he does. And I was, um, I, I just checked in and he's, he texted me back and he said, oh, you know, just got 97,000 pounds of, of cooked and diced chicken thighs donated to me. Just, a, just another day in the D, you know. And I'm, it's just amazing. And like anybody else who would have texted me that, I mean, even, even J- James, maybe, you know, <laughs> you, you do some crazy stuff sometimes. But like, you know, any other chef that would have, that would have texted me that would have been like, what, what are you talking about? Like a hundred thousand pounds, you're, you're pulling my leg. And it's like, Oh, chef Phil. Yeah. That, that makes total sense. And then I knew exactly that it was going to go to people in need. Um, mm-hmm. and that's because that's, you know, all he does. I mean, he really is, um, an amazing guy, uh, thinking about community first all the time. He's a, you know, and he wears like, I don't know how many different chefs hats he has because he's like the chef in residence at Oakland Avenue farm, uh, Oakland Avenue urban farm. You know, he's a co-founder of make food, not waste, which is, you know, they're still feeding people yeah, constantly, you know, um, in partnership with just his tentacles spread everywhere throughout the food system. Um, and so he is kind of the connector that, that connects a lot of these great, great organizations and great efforts. And through him, you know, a lot of change happens. And I feel like there's a lot, you know, to me, like there's a lot of like, you know, there's, a, there's, there's Phil is somebody that you want to write about almost every year. There's something to talk about what Phil's doing. And oh, it's, yeah. it's, it's definitely such, it's such a special moment that, because like, I feel like for him, it's another year. Like, he's not like, oh, I need to finally do something for people. He's like, yeah. okay, yeah, here I am. I'm exactly. just going to do this. Like, I've been here. Not yeah. much changed in Phil's life. He just kept nope. doing what he did. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, the funny thing is I have written about him once a year for the last <laughs> three years, you know, and every year I have written about Phil for the last three years because every time, you know, every year he is up to just amazing doing this work. Yeah. Um, and this is just kind of putting a fine point on it and, and finally giving him kind of the, you know, the, the spotlight that he's long deserved. Absolutely. What a nice way for you to be doing your final work for the free press. It did feel like I was going out on a high note. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Let's also talk about, um, Ederi Gudia. Edric. Edric. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Gabriel Hall. Talk about why she made the list. Oh, Chef e is, I mean, she's, she's amazing too. I mean, she, um, she works closely with Chef Phil too. She's, she's now, um, right. she's one of the lead chefs on, on, of that Make Food Not Waste nonprofit. And uh, what she's doing now is upcycling kitchen with Make Food Not Waste. So, um, you know, she's actually taking food that would go in landfills and feeding, I think, um, I think that students in, uh, in the city with that, um, mm-hmm. through a church effort there. That's one of the things she did taste of the diaspora, which is a massively right. successful. She's doing um, that again, right? Yeah. So that was a black history month effort, right. um, where, you know, they're delivering uh, shoebox lunches, um, uh, kind of as a, as a nod to the Jim Crow era, mm-hmm. um, while also highlighting, you know, food of the African diaspora and using produce from, you know, black owned farms in the city of Detroit, you know, a lot of, um, a lot of restaurants, black owned restaurants in the city of Detroit. Um, and they are planning on doing something similar around Juneteenth. Juneteenth yeah. Yep. yep, absolutely. And um, down the street from WDET, Anthony Lombardo. Yeah, Lombardo. Yeah. What a mensch. What a mensch. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about what he did. Yeah, so Lombardo, um, he had been already, he, he founded a nonprofit with uh, Desiree Vincent Levy, mm-hmm. uh, local activist and um who you know you may know from other efforts they they founded this nonprofit called Detroit Kitchen Terminal and the goal originally was to uh you know culinary training for folks who are coming back from prison covid kind of you know completely altered their plans as it, sure. as it has everyone's um and they you know at, right before christmas they took all this money that they were going to put towards a building mm-hmm. uh for that effort and instead said let's get this in the in the pockets of um you know our unemployed uh, industry folks in Detroit, and they cut you know five hundred dollar checks to uh, to 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 hard hit uh, restaurant folks in Detroit literally the week before Christmas. So yeah, so, and and now you know, and now they're shifting back. I think towards kind of the the original goal, but mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, and that that's what Anthony's doing when he's not at She Wolf, and you know, <laughs> yeah, I mean, and Anthony's incredible. That's one of my one of my best friends. Not to take anything away from him, but you know. A big mention there is Desiree. I mean, Desiree, For sure. you know, she does a lot of the of the, of the heavy lifting with you know that that work and mm-hmm. and you know we do, Desiree we did re- regenerate Detroit together and I mean her, she's another person who's kind of got her tentacles and everything. I mean, I often not really joke, but joke that she's going to be the governor of Michigan one day and, and, and beyond. So Desiree, she's got my vote. Yeah, seriously. Des- <laughs> Desiree Vincent is somebody that's out there doing real, real big things. And, and, uh, I, I liked your mention of her. And what's yeah. And, and well, and thank you for, for, for bringing it up too, because you know, r- really that, that is a shared award. Anthony's the chef and that's mm-hmm. why he got it. But I mean, Desiree is just as, uh, as you just know, as, yeah. more important really in, oh, in, in making sure. that, that organization run. And I mean, you know, Anthony, I mean, that guy is one of the most generous, loving people I know. And I mean, he's, he'll, you know, I mean, I remember talking 
talking to him about shutting down, and he was like, "Absolutely not." And he's gonna Anthony would Anthony's gonna come to your house and feed you personally, you know, with a spoon yeah. before he's gonna give up yeah. and 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 lay low. I loved his anecdote because he basically said, "Like, well, I, I you know, when when the pandemic hit, I felt like a doctor on an airplane, you know, where where like yeah, somebody's in somebody's in 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 a medical emergency. It's my duty to like stand up and cook and feed people. Like that's what we do. Mm-hmm. And that was just yeah. I mean, just that imagery is is great. Uh, but if you know, if you honestly, if you go back to March and the conversations a lot of us chefs were having about what were we all going to do because some people were like, I'm going to lay low. I'm going to shut down for a few months. And Anthony was the one that really gave me the courage to kind of like, okay, let's just pivot. I mean, he was, he was the first person that put pivoting in my head before anyone else was even talking about it. He was the one that was like, no dude, like keep going. So, so shout out to Anthony for that. Uh, Max Hardy. Yeah. I mean, Max is a, uh, Max doesn't sleep. I don't know when, you know, I've, I've joked with him over the last few years about like, Wow, how does he well, find time clone, to do all the things? Oh. <laughs> there's two of them yeah, running yeah. around yeah. out there. Yeah, that explains so much. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Max was a was a big part of um, the early part of the Too Many Cooks in the Kitchen effort, which is kind of organized by David Rudolph, um, who is a well-known publicist in the city, and he has a number of, uh, of restaurant clients. Mm-hmm. And so it's like Max, uh, Genevieve Vang. Um, from She's on your list as well. Bangkok 96. Mm-hmm. Yep. yep. Stephanie Bird at Floods. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Alvaro. Padilla actually is not his client, which was another cool thing. He just, he just, you know, joined in this effort to feed the shelters um, early on when they really didn't have anybody. You know, they basically single-handedly fed the NSO, COTS, Alternative for Girls, um, and I think Detroit Rescue Mission, they, they, they helped out a lot. Just these these restaurateurs who, you know, took the, the food that was in their kitchen. That was how it started. They're like, well, I have food that's, that's about to go bad. What do we do? Let's cook it for... Um, you know, for these shelters. And then it turned into Chef Phil gets involved and all of a sudden, you know, it's like thousand pound, thousands of pounds of food are showing up um, to cook. But it was just this grassroots initiative. It's not a nonprofit. It was just literally this, you know, this group of, of chefs all connected through this publicist to, uh, to feed the shelters. And David, I should say, also sits on the board of the NSO. Mm-hmm. And so he's been engaged in this work in a long of time course. too and has relationships with the shelters. But really, I mean, it's another one of these cases where you just see these connections being made, right? Just people who who know people and how to how to connect food to people who need it, yeah, you know, and and chefs who can cook it too. I mean, that's that's they a cooked big thing. hundreds of thousands of meals. I mean, this was unbelievable. And yeah, unbelievable and and Max has his own foundation too. Then I think he left too many yes. cooks uh, mm-hmm. at, at like the end of April or May, and then started focused on a uh, one chef can can eighty six hunger, which is yeah. his foundation mm-hmm. and. Uh, and then found a, found a time to open a, a like a pizza, Jed's, yeah. Uh, yeah, Jed's, <laughs> a pizza joint, you know, in the middle of the summer, um, and it's still opening up like another two restaurants, you yeah. know, potentially before the end of the year. So yeah, and, I mean, and also like I'll still while, while being good. Like, if you go to Coop right now, it's delicious. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, like, not, you're, you're doing all this and you're still running a high quality restaurant. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Max is. Uh, I I would I would love you know a pinky's worth of his energy. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, yeah. You could bottle that stuff. Yeah. Be like Richard beyond belief. He does. You can buy. Max, you can buy yeah. Max's spices right now. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And Ron uh, Bartel's on here. Oh, Ron well. Bartel. Yeah, of course. He's mm-hmm. he's also part of the Too Many Cooks effort. Right. Ron is a former NFL uh, player from Detroit. You know, Renaissance high grad. Um, who you probably know him as is you know he opened Cuzzo's Kitchen and wa- yep. uh, Chicken and Waffles a few mm-hmm. years ago. So they were like. Re, they were closed for like eight months and were renovating um, and then reopened the weekend that, you know, everything started to shut down. So it was just like a crazy scramble. And then he just kind of said, well, we're going to help this too many cooks thing. He's always, you know, very, um, very uh, minded for helping children in the area. So mm-hmm. Cots was, um, um, you know, I think was his, was his kind of baby. He said, we're going to, we're going to feed this one organization and really, um, you know, really give back. And so now, you know, the, the thing for someone like him who was not really a restaurant guy to then see a restaurant in the middle of a pandemic, you know, a lot of the inequities in the, in the restaurant business, the pay, you know, the lack of support outside of it, the lack of healthcare, these are all things that really kind of, um, I think he saw in a new light this last year. And now he's, you know, kind of dedicated to, to writing some of those wrongs as, as an owner with responsibility. We're here with Mark Kurlianchek and uh, Chef James Regato. If you go to freep.com, you can read about all these f- fabulous folks who have been doing incredible work during this pandemic. Um, Mark did beautiful articles about all of them. The photos are gorgeous, of course. You know, you're, you're one-stop shopping there, Mark Kurlianchek. <laughs> well, uh, shout out to the photo department. I did not <laughs> oh, you, do my photos do this year. You yes. usually do all your photos. <laughs> yes. You know, in 2019, when you and I talked, 
Um, you said this year will be the biggest year for restaurants in Detroit's history. Did I say that? Yep. Okay. You said this will be the. You said this is going to be the biggest year Detroit has Metro Detroit has ever seen for restaurants, and I thought, wow, because it was an unbelievable year with restaurants opening everywhere, and little did you know, of course, that a pandemic yeah. was coming, that definitely changed everything. What if you could look at um, Metro Detroit and restaurants, both of you, in a year to eighteen months from now? What's it going to look like, and how how differently? Will chefs and restaurants operate after this, or will things go back pretty much to normal, do you think? Hmm. <coughs> yeah, well, you. you know, I think, uh, I mean, I don't think normal exists anymore. I mean, you know, it, it, there's there's only forward. There's no backwards. I definitely think that, you know, there's going to be a lot to address, I think, with, with, with inequities. And I think that, um, you know, what... What is the landscape? Look, you know, with with the food systems. There's so many things that are that were broken that were kind of exposed during the pandemic. So I'd like to I'd like to imagine that the, there's more good in the future. But at the same time, during the shutdown, you know, you saw fast food restaurants just just quadrupling their profits. You saw, you know, I mean, I drive drive by a KFC. You know, mm-hmm. there's cars in the street, Popeyes, Chick Fil A. You know, you get direct traffic for these for these restaurants. So. So I think there's going to be the bad things are probably going to, you know, grow. And I, I think the good things are going to grow too. So it's going to, it's going to continue to be a polarizing industry, but hopefully that this past year empowered those that are going to stick around and do it right. You know, I definitely think that there's, there's, there's the future is always going to have bright spots, but I think it's up to the individuals to kind of advocate for the the world they want to live in. Mm-hmm. And I mean, every time you buy, you know, a fast food, you know, bucket of chicken, you're advocating for the kind of food system you want to see around you. And I'm not shaming anybody. You, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. But if you, if you, if you love and believe in restaurants and, and, you know, kind of advocate for them and support them. And, you know, I think that nowadays you're held accountable. You can't, you know, you can't, the minimum wage, right? Nobody should be paying that. Like no business that that, that looks, you know, the, the CEOs and owners that look themselves in the mirror. I don't even know what the minimum wage is. Like, I honestly don't, I don't even know if it's nine or 10. I don't know what it is. At this point in the game, you know, $15 is, is like the lowest most restaurants should be paying people. And I mean, I, and I think that we have to do that ethically before, you know, the, it's a, it's a law. So, yeah, I want to see more restaurants kind of like advocate for their people. Maybe that means charging more. If that means explaining to the customer base why something is the way that it is. Mm-hmm. And then it's hopefully uh, educating the customer base that, you know, a burger can't really be under $10. You know, you're going to have to pay for certain things. And I, I, I think that there's going to be more of that. But it's really up to the public to support the people that are trying to do it right. Mm-hmm. Mark? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I generally agree with, with most of what James said. I mean, I think that the pandemic really just kind of um, put a like a fast forwarded a lot of the the trends that we are already seeing in this. Mm-hmm. You know, just in terms of like automate, you know, di- kind of in different areas. Like, first of all, to talk about equity and and you know, pay what's what the pay gap is, and mm-hmm. you know, health insurance and all these all these things, but also just like automation you know, the the corporatization, the the rise of, you know, fast casual. I mean, those things are just going to continue. I think there is a chance that, you know, I, I, from the very beginning, I said, you know, communal dining is dead. So that thing, I I don't know that communal dining is coming back, Mm -hmm. but there's also the chance that, you know, people are going to be so where we so miss each other's, you know, connection and energy that there's this whole, you know, if, if we can actually get these variants under control and, and, you know, the pandemic does, does wane to a point of some kind of safe normalcy, you know, there, there's predictions that we're, we're, we're approaching the roaring 2020s and, you know, we'll all be shoulder to shoulder celebrating, you know, with mm-hmm. champagne and caviar. I don't know. So this is so where we'll Mark see. announces his fondue concept <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, he's, that he's opening post <laughs> food critic. You can find out more about the 2021 Food Fighters at Freep.com. Our thanks to Mark Hurlianchek for talking with us, to you for listening, and... We would like to thank LaMarca Prosecco for their support. From the hills of Veneto, Italy, you can never go wrong with Prosecco, whether it's in a spritz or drinking straight. Joan Isabella is our executive producer with producer David Lyons and assistant producer Lisa Brancato, and editing by Rowan Nemisto. Production support by Studios on the Pond and original music by the Mallet Brothers. This is a production of Detroit's public radio station, WDET. Thank you.